If you love the Volker sample, like I do, then this video might be for you. If you're looking to get some new and interesting ways of drum programming with the Volker sample, then stay tuned because I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into step sequencing, uh, step automation, uh, and motion sequencing, all right? These are really useful techniques for creating uh, drum patterns and drum grooves uh, that sound a little bit more interesting than uh, something that you might have just pulled up from scratch. And you're probably wondering why the Volker drum is here. Yes, I will be talking about a few reasons why I love this as well. So let's dive in. Okay, cool. So I have some sounds loaded up uh, on here. I've got 10 sounds. And now I have a bit of a groove. So let's clear that pattern and sort of start from fresh, okay? Uh, I'm gonna go here, function, and I'm gonna clear all, nothing left, okay? Um, sometimes a really nice place to start with drum programming is actually like the rhythm section, so the, uh, the hi-hats or the, um, the shakers. And I've got a little sound here, um, and I'm gonna just kind of close off the decay a little bit, make it not so open and I'm going to go step and I'm going to sequence those on every single step so sixteenths right so you can hear how that sounds pretty stiff and not very um, doesn't really have a lot of sort of swing to it so let's change that by introducing some volume changes per step okay um, so if I'm in the step sequencer section what I can do is I can actually press and hold the step and change the volume, this is the volume here, for this sound, per step, okay? This basically is velocity, because velocity is more or less individual volume changes for each step, right? So if I have different volumes for each step, then that means that my groove is gonna sound a little bit more natural. Okay, so that is vastly different to what we initially had. Now let's introduce a little bit of swing. We've got this knob up here. Don't need to do too much with the bulk sample. It's already quite a lot. Okay, now let's take it one step further. Let's add some pitch variation as well. So here we have the speed uh, in the pitch section for this sample. And you see when I turn it, it uh, changes the pitch. Um, I could do that same sort of technique where I um, just individually change the pitch for different steps. But in this section, I'm going to just um, hit record, press play and modulate the pitch. All right, cool, very subtle, but these make a really big impact when it comes to your overall drum production, okay? Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, open up the decay uh, on individual steps. So I'm going to go again to the, um, the step mode uh, and I'm going to open up the decay. Some of these steps, fingers crossed, works out for me. All right, sounds a little wonky, but we can sort of set the global amount just by turning it down. Now let's see what this sounds like uh, in context with some other sounds. So I'm gonna go to my next part. I've got this button here, which will switch the part. Get me the kick, uh, step. Great, and that's the next sound, uh, snare, step on the five and the 13. Man, such a mad little drum machine, this. Let's go to our open hat. Uh, three, seven, 11, 
and 15. Now you could take it a step further as well. With the open hats, you could um, modulate the decay as well on individual steps. So say uh, this step here, you wanted to have the decay open more. Or uh, change the tune for it. Uh, let's do the same for this last one. And then we can just build upon this and add, introduce some more sounds. Okay, so let's uh, go bring the volume down a little bit. Uh, step mode. Let's just be a bit random. Take the decay down for that. So it doesn't clash too much with the other drum parts. Now we can take this um, approach and apply it to something melodic to create an actual bass line. So we've got a sound here, got this bass sound. And I can use the pitch uh, or the per step uh, pitch uh, to create a bit of a bass pattern. I'm just gonna make this up on the spot, so wish me well, right? I'm gonna go ahead and program in some bass steps. So. I mean, it already kind of sounds good, but say I wanted to have some pitch variation, so maybe change the note of this. What I might do actually is I'll just solo this. Not solo, not mute, sorry, solo. There we go. And if I hold this and change the pitch here. Cool. Sounds pretty gritty. Let's do the same one for this, but maybe drop the pitch. So you can see there's, there it says minus 13. So that's like semitones, presumably. Uh, let's make it 12, so it's like an octave. Okay, cool, now let's hear it all together. Bit more swing, about 20%. Cool. Um, so that's kind of it for the uh, Volca sample. I just really wanted to illustrate how simple it is to be able to do kind of complex automation changes per step. Um, Electron users will commonly know this as um, parameter locking, um, and you can do multiple um, sort of parameter locks per step. Uh, I can't remember how many, um, not quite as many as some of the Electron units. Nonetheless, for a tiny little uh, lo-fi sounding drum machine like the Volca sample, that is a really, really powerful thing uh, that you can do. You'll notice I've got the Volca drum here. Um, one of my favorite things about the Volca drum um, is um, actually the main selling point of the unit, which is um, the fact that each of the six parts that we have here um, has this sort of dual synthesizer thing kind of going on. It's really difficult to explain, so I'm gonna leave that to the manufacturers to tell you what it, exactly it is, but more or less, this button here, the layer one, two, uh, this button here allows you to change the um, sound uh, for each layer. So each sound has two layers, all right? So that's probably a better way of saying it, two layers. When you've got it um, highlighted, it means that all of these parameters will be controlling both layers. But if you press it, you can actually control layer one or layer two. So theoretically, you could come up with um, like a bass sound and layer that with like more of a high pitch uh, sound as well to create some really interesting tones. Um, so if I go to layer one, you can hear that sub bass layers coming out and I can change the pitch of that. 
Whoa. And then if I hit layer two, you'll hear that clicky sound that hits at the attack of that sub really makes that punch a lot harder. So this is how you can design some really amazing kick drums. Now it's a completely digital synthesizer. Uh, so you get some really powerful sounds out of this. And yeah, that's absolutely one of the things I love about this. And when you layer these two together, you got like this drum machine that's playing back more sort of PCM style samples. You can obviously import via the USB cable. Um, layering it with this really unique digital drum percussion synthesizer. And I've got this little pattern here. Right. Uh, and when you've got them synced together, you can come up with some really unique and interesting grooves. So there you have it. Thanks for tuning in. I just want to share some of my thoughts on why I love these two Volker units, uh, particularly for drum production. Uh, stay awesome, and we'll see you next time. Hey everyone, my name's Leroy, and your name is, I don't know, but I'm glad that you're here. <laughs>